I've talked about uh, the house calls that Doc or Dr. Zodok here pioneered in making. These were what they used to call protest demonstrations. But in September of 1977, uh, I noticed in the Miami Herald that there was going to be the Benson and Hedges 100s film series that was coming to the uh, Riviera Theater opposite the University of Miami campus. And it was a series of 100 of the greatest movie classics uh, with 10 of the all-time greats every year for 10 years. And they were films from America's golden age, and they were going to be screened by a critic. uh, His name was Arthur Knight. And uh, uh, this was going to be coming back right next to college campuses for upwards of 10 years. So the... the, uh, these would include uh, Sunset Boulevard and A Night in Casablanca. Of course, if you remember Harpo smoking that, that two-foot-long cigarette holder, uh, and 42nd Street, The African Queen, Citizen Kane, Top Hat, Stagecoach, The Public Enemy. I, I did notice at the time that m- most of these movies had a lot of cigarette smoking in them. But in any event, the first movie was going to be A Streetcar Named Desire. And between Sunday when I read this ad and Thursday, uh, I was able to organize um, a group of medical students and fellow residents in family medicine to go in front of the Riviera Theater Friday night at midnight for the Benson and Hedges uh, film series. And instead of A Streetcar Named Desire, we had uh, A Streetcar Named Emphysema and uh, Benson and Hedges uh, Destroys Healthy Bodies 12 Ways and so forth. We had about 40 people outside of the theater that day, um, the, 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 Birmingham, the Miami News uh, had a front-page piece, uh, doctors huff about cigarette gimmick, and then on the following Monday, they um, again wrote a piece in the, uh, the TV, and, and, and radio critic uh, wrote a really great piece about it as well. We also placed an ad in the uh, University of Miami newspaper, uh, Streetcar Named Emphysema, which was the first paid ad that I'm aware of in the United States, on tobacco. Our second house call uh, was at the uh, Virginia Slims Tennis Tournament in uh, Fort Lauderdale, or actually North Hollywood. And one of the beneficiaries, as I've noted in other stories, was the American Cancer Society. But we did, in a very cold day in January 1978, uh, get together. In fact, it was really the anniversary of the Surgeon General's report 14 years earlier. We got together about 30 or 40 people, and including some of my patients. Uh, one guy with a laryngectomy who had a sign saying, yes, Virginia, there is a cancer. And Dr. Richards, you should know better. Renee Richards was a, uh, a male to female. She, she, she'd been an ophthalmologist, and she had a transsexual operation, and transgender oper- and she became a women's tennis player. And she it was fascinating because some years later she did apologize for having a shield for a cigarette company. But we got great coverage in the uh, the, the media and the and both the TV and print from the Fort Lauderdale News. Yes, Virginia, there is a cancer. Doc diagnoses Cherney as an ad. And um, the last house call was uh, to the Miami Herald. And we had, during our lunch hour, about 60 uh, nurses, physicians, medical students standing in front of the Miami Herald carrying signs. And also uh, about 30 of the students were carrying uh, a placard. Each had one cigarette ad representing that one cigarette ad per day average that they had in the Miami Herald. There was actually more than 30 in a month because the Sunday magazine had about five or six. And um, the Herald basically ignored us, although they did uh, finally send someone down to observe us. And I learned about this a few days later. They put a two-paragraph story together, and the next day, doctors protest cigarette ads in Herald. But it was the lead story on the nightly news the night before. And then the following Sunday, The editor, John McMullen, wrote a column in which he likened uh, me to the goat lady that used to come up to his office at the newspaper and bring her pet goat who would eat the contents of the ashtrays. And uh, McMullen was a very blustery, uh, very conservative uh, fellow who did not like what we did, uh, protested our protest by saying that cigarette ads were perfectly legal and we were just a bunch of prohibitionists. Um, I, by this point, uh, about a year later, had a, uh, a radio show, and I invited him to come on uh, the air, which he did, and he, he held his ground very well, and he talked about the First Amendment, and I talked about the ethics of cigarette ads. But that gives you an idea of how we sparked attention to this issue through our house calls, through our bus benches. As a result of this, I was even offered the TV and radio shows that I 
wound up having in Miami. But I think you could look at this as really the origins of physicians getting involved outside of their clinic in the streets and trying to laugh the pushers out of town.